Hi everyone, this video will be explaining the chi-squared test, but first let's talk a little bit about association. So if two species are found within the same habitat, they show a positive association. This means that they probably have some relationship in which they are reliant on each other. So for example, a predator-prey relationship or a symbiotic relationship, which is when both species benefit from interaction with the other. Secondly, if two species tend to not occur within the same habitat, we can say that they show a negative association. So species will generally show a negative association if there is competition for resources between them because it's inefficient for them to live in the same habitat if they're competing for the same natural resources. If two species do not interact at all, there will be no association between them and their distribution will be independent of one another. To determine this association between the two species, a method called quadrac sampling is used and then a chi-squared test is conducted in order to determine whether there is an association between them. So quadrats are rectangular frames that are placed inside a defined area. In each quadrat, the presence or absence of the species is counted and recorded. This allows the quadrats where both species were present to be compared against the total number of, quad of quadrats. The sampling is repeated many times in order to make the data more reliable. So obviously, quadrat sampling is only effective for counting stationary organisms, such as plants and certain animals, because obviously, if an object is mobile, if an organism is mobile, they can move from one quadrat to the other, which makes the data unreliable. So a chi-squared test must then be applied to the data gathered from the quadrat sampling to determine if there is a statistically significant association between the distribution of the two species. And there are six main steps that must be conducted in order to do this. So these are the observed frequency values for the absence and presence of king scallop and queen scallop species in 50 quadrats. So the first step is to identify the hypothesis, the two possible hypotheses. So firstly, there's the null hypothesis, which is when there is no significant difference between the distribution of the species, or there's no association between the two species. Secondly, there's the alternative hypothesis, which is when there is a significant difference between the distribution of the species or that the species are associated. So in order to determine which of these hypotheses must be accepted and which one must be rejected for a given data of observed values, we must start with calculating the expected frequencies for the two species, which is step two. So step two is to construct a table of expected frequency values. You can do this by doing the row total times the column total divided by the grand total. So for the quadrats where both species were present, this would be 21, which is the row total, multiplied by 26, which is the column total, all divided by 50. So 21 times 26 divided by 50. And this gives 10.9. So for the quadrats where the queen scallop was absent, but the king scallop was present. We have to do 21 times 24 divided by 50, and this gives 10.1. For the quadrats where the queen scallop was present, but the king scallop was absent, this would be 29 times 26 divided by 50, which is 15.1, and when they're both absent, the expected frequency value is 29 times 24 time, divided by 50, which is 13.9. So now that we've calculated the expected frequency values for the data, we need to use this formula to calculate the chi-squared value. So the formula is the observed frequency minus the expected frequency whole squared divided by the expected frequency and then the sum of that. So for the quadrats where both of the, um, both of the species are present, this would be 6 minus 10.9 whole squared divided by 10.9, which gives 2.2, which I've already written down. Then for the quadrat where the queen scallop is absent but the king scallop is present, this would be 15 minus 10.1 whole squared divided by 10.1, and this gives 2.38. For the quadrat where the queen scallop is present but the king scallop is absent, this would be 20 minus um, 15.1 whole squared divided by 15.1, and 
and that gives 1.59. Then for the quadrat where both species are absent, this would be 9 minus 13.9 whole squared divided by 13.9, which gives 1.73. Then remember the chi-squared value is the sum of all of these values. So it's equal to 2.20 plus 2.38 plus 1.59 plus 1.73, which is 7.90. In order to determine if the chi-squared value is statistically significant, a degree of freedom must first be identified. So the degree of freedom is just a mathematical term um, that we don't really need to know too much about in our syllabus. However, when testing for the association between two species, which is what we will be doing mainly, the degree of freedom is always one. However, when testing for association between multiple species, the following formula can be used. So the degree of freedom would be m minus 1 times n minus 1, where m and n are the number of rows and columns, respectively. So this is a table for the chi-squared distribution when the degree of freedom is 1. So the p-value is basically just a measure of the probability that any association between the two species is a result of chance. Therefore, when this p-value is less than 0.05 or 5%, we can say that there is a statistically significant association between the two species, since there is a very small, only a 5% likelihood that this observed association was by chance. Therefore, the smaller the p-value, the more confidence we can have in our results. So since the chi-squared value that we calculated is 7.9, the p-value that's corresponding is even smaller than 0.01, and hence the difference between the observed and expected frequencies that we calculated is statistically significant, and we can conclude that there is an association between the two species. This means that the alternative hypothesis is accepted and the null hypothesis is rejected. The final step is to determine whether this association is positive or negative. And we can simply do this by just looking at the data. So if we go back to the top, it is clear that the two species do not tend to be present in the same area. So we can infer that there is a negative association between them. Thank you for listening. I hope this video helped. Bye.